Fit and Ten Nation, welcome to day eight. And hopefully, being that it's week eight and we've gone through one full week, you have done what, Martina? I mean day eight. That's what I said. You said week eight. I did. Okay. I meant day eight. Anyway, we have done three cardio and three workouts. That's right. You should have done your three cardios and your three workouts. And you don't have to do it this way, but we recommend doing a day of weights, the next day, Mm -hmm. cardio the next day weights the next day cardio you don't have to do it that way some people like to do their weights and their cardio on the same day and have a day off you can do that yeah and then personally i had to do it based on my work so sometimes yep. i have to do the cardio in the morning and do the workout in the afternoon well actually you know that reminds me of something and and really what i want to stress here it's just since we're on that topic is if you have a hard time doing your cardio and or your weights do it first thing in the morning when you wake up. Yeah, it's a great idea. I personally, I, I love doing weights. I don't have a problem with it, but I don't really enjoy doing cardio. I actually like doing power walks, right. but I don't like getting on the spin bike and doing that. It's just, I find it, it well, it's just, it's, it's very painful. But you know what the intervals that you've given us for the first week have been yeah, they're, they're, pretty they're, agreeable. They're, Let's put it they're relatively, <laughs> they're not super hard. If you have a hard time doing anything, whatever it is, in this case, we're talking specifically about the challenge. Do it first thing in the morning. And one of the best things you can do, especially after lying in a bed for, let's say, at least seven hours, hopefully you're getting at least seven hours of sleep, Indeed. is to get up and move. And for me, Martina, I don't know if, um, I don't know if I've ever said this to you or not, but I learned this at a very young age because when I got ready for my first show, uh, at the age of 19, I started getting ready for my very first competition, bodybuilding competition. And back in that day, we believed that if you got up and you did your cardio on an empty stomach, you'd burn more fat. Yeah. So that was just, you know, that's what we believed. A thing. That was a thing. And um, so we had to do it first thing in the morning when we wake up because that was the, you know, that's when you're going to burn the fat. Um, but the thing that I noticed is when I started doing that, I'm like, my whole day was set. It was like mm -hmm. I was in a better frame of mind to get things accomplished. Mm -hmm. And when I stopped getting ready for shows, and I went back to my off season, or when I stopped doing the cardio, yeah. uh, I noticed that change. My mindset wasn't the same. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh. And so I started going back to doing cardio even though I wasn't getting ready for a show because it had such a profound effect on my mental state. Yeah. Huge, yeah. huge, 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 and, huge. Yeah. Your productivity. Huge. Yes. So, you know, one thing I want to, and it still to this day does that which is one reason I like to get up and get moving if I can. Um, you know, sometimes I've got 5 a.m. clients. I don't really want to get up at 3.30 so I can start my cardio, but yeah. I guess I could. Okay. Um, but for the most part, the first thing I do in the morning is I get up and I move, which is usually just going for a power walk. That's what I do. So again, if you struggle with any of the exercise, in fact, I'm going to encourage you to pick at least one of the modalities, if not both. So either the cardio and or the weights, do it first thing in the morning when you wake up. Just get moving and see how your day goes. Do it, you know, do it a couple times and then compare that to when you don't do it. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's like, I don't know. It has, for me, it has a profound effect. Yeah, no brainer, for sure. Yeah. Martina, the last video you were talking about uh, something like baklava or something? <laughs> <laughs> bacalao. 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 Okay, bacalao. <laughs> bacalao. Right. So that's salted, col uh, salted cod fish. Yep. That is uh, typical of like the Spanish or Portuguese um, regions and that we also have in Africa because we're colonized by the Portuguese. But anyway, to make a long story short, we were talking about in the last video about a little bit of guesswork, guesstimating your uh, your macros, which unfortunately when I make, for example, a stew or even you make like a larger recipe of this or especially with protein in it, well, I want to do the stew this, the way it's supposed to be made, which like, you know, you probably saw the, uh, the fish is in, has been in water for for a couple of days already, and I'm gonna make my stew with like lots of uh, vegetables. Mostly it's gonna be eggplant, but so I'm gonna write everything in there, right? The eggplant, let's say the palm oil, the tomatoes, the, I'm not gonna write ginger, we'll talk about that in the, in the future as well, but I'm gonna put the whole fish in there, and then I'm gonna mix the whole thing, and I'm gonna cook it for like however many hours, but when I'm done with this, I'm gonna measure everything at the beginning and at the end, and I'll show you that on the video. The fact is when I'm gonna portion it, it's not going to be super accurate, right? We were talking about it. It's very possible that accidentally you'll have more fish in this bowl versus this other bowl, right? So that would be what probably one of those things where Mark would say, it's not really a single food ingredient, but I think that it falls within my diet. I want to be able to do it 
so I will. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with you making recipes that are made up of single ingredient foods. I mean, I, I guess you can make the argument that that's always the case with any food for that matter. But, um, but, but specifically here, we're talking about actually taking just a truly a single ingredient food, not really doing anything in terms of processing besides mm -hmm. cooking it. Cooking it yeah. uh, and I'm fine with that. I'm totally okay with that. I understand what you mean that when you subdivide up that, it's, it's a soup, is it? A stew. Oh, stew, okay. Mm -hmm. When you subdivide it up, it's not probably gonna be 100% accurate uh, bowl to bowl. But if you know the total amount of everything that went in there, and you consume that whole thing, then you know over the days we can average it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, do don't. This doesn't mean you can do this in general with your calories. I.e., one day you have super high calories, one day you go super low calories, and then everything will just balance out. Do not do that. Okay. But in the case of this, there's going to be probably some minimal difference. It's not going to be a huge yeah. difference. There's going to be some difference between you know one 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 bowl having whatever. Let's say five ounces of. Uh, of cod or whatever and then the next one having you know four four and a half ounces yeah. like and then the way i would typically go about these these stews or soups during the winter that i really enjoy is i would actually probably put that in my uh, food log at first and this you already saw on the pictures for yesterday of my uh, my salad but my salad was just based on we got the macros late afternoon right so i had already eaten a whole bunch of food and i was left <laughs> with a certain amount of calories a certain amount of protein, fat, and carbohydrates. And I just, I put them in there, make them fit, and that's how I knew how much more food I was able to eat, right? I was not going to take that bacalao and put it in my last meal and then just go over with all those things. It's like you have to intentionally put it in almost the first ingredient. Yeah, okay, let's talk about uh, my fitness pal and calorie suggestions. Okay. I hate it. Yeah, just ignore it. Okay, mm -hmm. that's all we really have to say on that. Your calorie macro suggestions are what I give you, not what my fitness pal suggests. Or things. Okay, so please make sure that you follow what I'm giving you and not what my fitness pal gives you by default or whatever. And um, on top of that, I'm sure some of you probably have your exercise calories turned on in my fitness pal. Make sure you turn this off. So if you're not sure, well, actually, if you look at the top where it has your calories listed, and you see, it'll say, yeah, it'll say exercise calories. Yeah. We don't want that being there. So to turn that off, you simply go to the little ellipsis. So the three, the three little dots at the bottom right corner of my fitness pal screen. So click on that, click on goals, and then scroll all the way down to the very bottom. And you're going to see exercise calories. Make sure you turn that off. Okay. We don't care about my fitness pal telling you that, hey, you can eat more calories because you whatever went, you for, went a, for a walk. You went for a walk or something. Okay. We're not doing that. One other thing I think I'm gonna mention about my fitness pal, and we'll there's a couple other things we'll talk about in a future video, I think. Um, you can copy your meals. You can try this yourself in my fitness pal. If you swipe right at a meal, it will add the meal uh, the previous day to that section. So for example, if today you want to copy meal two into meal two, so you're just replicating meals, let's say day to day, you can just swipe right. It will copy yesterday's meal two into meal two. Now, if you don't want to do that, let's say you want to copy, I don't know, meal two into meal four, yesterday's meal two into today's meal four. You can click on the little ellipses and you can choose to copy a meal I back. Meal. Yeah. It was a, it was a make or break decision. Um, for, yeah, between chronometer versus my fitness yes, pal, right? Yes. I remember that. Yeah. Because I use this feature so much, I went back to my fitness pal. Yeah. Um, and it just makes entering your food so much easier because I am somebody who has, I have all these meals pre-made and then I tend to replicate them. So it's just super easy. Or if they're not exactly the same, I'll just modify. replicate it and modify. So yeah. it makes life way easier. Okay. Yeah. Let's get to the message of the day because it is that time. The message of the day today is the following. You don't have to be extreme to achieve results. You just have to be consistent. Consistent, yeah. And of course, consistent with the right things, right? We're, that's the assumption of consistency. Consistent with the right things. Extreme just means temporary. There is no such thing as being consistent with extremes. It just, extremes don't last. It, you'll burn out, you'll become unhappy, you're just going to get tired, okay? You're not gonna be able to sustain it. Yeah. In order to, to sustain and be consistent with whatever you're doing, it has to be reasonable. It has to be reasonable, okay? Mm -hmm. Consistency is numero uno. 
as it says in page 40 in your manual, tips and reminders. And hopefully you've read that by now. Positive energy, positive vibes, believe in yourself for the love of God, give some gratitude, and we will talk to you again very soon here. Indeed.